Hey Scorpios, how y'all doing? Welcome. We're going to be taking a look at your June through July Litha seasons, summer solstice slash winter solstice, depending on where you are in the world video here. So let's talk briefly about your meditation. I immediately saw a dragonfly. Dragonfly energy, it, it's Ace of Swords meets the Seven of Cups. It's about, you know, feeling a lack of clarity and then reaching that point where you just have that woof moment where it's a big aha, uh, either through writing. A dragonflies represent, you know, the act of writing for clarity for me, uh, telling a truth in written form, um, or just really choosing to uh, take your emotions and acknowledge and honor them, but leaning into the objectivity uh, that your mind provides so that you can really attain focus uh, long enough to say, oh, okay, I feel 100% confident in my truth and I can communicate it thusly, right? Because when you're confident in your truth, what is true for you and what you have to say, then no one else can sway you. And that is the power of the sword suit, right? With that air energy. So I saw this dragonfly and I saw it attach itself to the, like the roof of like a speeding train. And I saw that the faster that this train went, instead of like flying off or being thrown off, the dragonfly transformed into what seemed like a superhero, um, like a dragonfly superhero, so that it could stay attached to it. And then I saw it sort of like choose to detach itself and then just sort of float up into the sky. And I saw the words, what is my truth now? And I saw the image of the death key, which is your key in the tarot, which is about transformation, which is about endings and beginnings, which is about being willing to look at the shadows that we all have within us, but also in the collective psyche of shadow network as well, right? Being willing to look at that stuff and not turn away, right? There, there's light and shadow. They must exist together. And I feel like there's a big imbalance um, in our society and the world at large, a big imbalance. There's a lot of shadow. Ha there has been for a long time. A lot of shadow going on and over pronunciation of that shadow, right? Of darkness. But then there's also this this imbalance where the light is concerned, where there's there's this uh, sort of this tendency to almost like a toxic positivity, where there's this tendency to just focus on the positive, la 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 la, like that Pollyanna thing, where it turns into it goes so far around to the left it ends up coming back out again on the right. Like it, 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 it defeats its own purpose because it's not in balance, right? So that's coming up for you here. And I feel like that makes a lot of sense and feels like a home base for you, Scorpio. And I swear, even as, I, as I'm saying this right now, it's been kind of cloudy all day where I am. I'm back in the UK. Um, but it feels like I it just more clouds rolled. It just became like a lot darker, but I kind of love it for you because it, it does feel like it is um, symbolic of a certain calming, right? Of a certain calming. And that's what it feels like. So your animal for this time period is coming through as the lizard. So beautiful. Lizard, even though this is fire energy, this equates to the Knight of Cups in the Tarot, which you also have. Here, you've got Knight of Cups twice. It's in your place of victory. Knight of Cups is about really leaning into your purpose and really loving what you do, like from your soul, from your heart space, truly loving what you do to the point where you would do it even if you didn't get paid for it. If what you do for work or for your passion project or your hobby, if you would do it even if you didn't get paid for it, that is a really strong indication that you are living out an aspect of your purpose through that work or through that activity. And I feel like that's coming up for you a lot here. And that's really beautiful. Lizard is about knowing when to move and when to be still as well. So again, that aspect of fire and timing. I do feel like there's something that you've been patient around. I do feel like that's paying off in some way. But I also feel like if you show even more patience, just wait and see where you're going to be. Like I'm, I'm seeing uh, November, like your birthday season, November, later in the year. Sagittarius season, I just heard. Um there, there's going to be another point where some manifestations come through or something comes through for you around Sagittarius season. Um, those of you within this collective. So lizards, um, I have a bearded dragon and he molts. I think it's called molting where their, their skin comes off and they shed their skin. Um, and I'm seeing that image of that happening for you uh, moving out of this time period. And, and I feel like that feels like what that was about in the meditation with what is my truth now, that death key, reframing who you've been and where you've been in relationship or in the light of 
where you are now. I think you've learned some things. I think you've manifested some things. I think you've changed some things around. What is your truth now? Is there an old story out there? Is there some former version of you that, that, that maybe needs an updating? I'm hearing updating your OS. There's something about um, operate, you know, updating your, your operating system in a way to reflect who you are now and everything that you've learned to get here. It feels like a very, like a line in the sand around that, right? You are coming through as the Wheel of Fortune, which is just like, hello, so perfect. Wheel of Fortune, this is good luck. This is the wheel must turn. This is things changing suddenly within your favor. I love all these cards here as well. I feel like that rabbit is a symbol of your good fortune and you're chasing it. Again, with that timing, that white rabbit, this is that Alice in Tarot land. So it's like, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date, right? I do feel like you are actively chasing like your dreams, what you want, what really makes you happy, what gets you up in the morning. But it's like, you doing that yields other returns, yields greater returns. There's going to be some unexpected twists and turns that happen that feels like, you know, it's like that Jupiter energy is just quite lucky, which feels it's like, hey, sign me up. It's really, really beautiful. Now, in your place of challenge, this is fascinating, y'all. You have nine of cups, which is wish fulfillment. So the fact that this is coming in in your place of challenge, and we've got the caterpillar here, which talks about transformation and cycles, I, I'm hearing shed some weight. Um, what I mean by that, I don't mean literal weight. What I mean is there's a shedding of the weight in terms of your challenge around, is there a narrative in your head? And this is just an example. You'll have your own version, right? It'll be different for everyone. But is there a narrative in your head that might go a little something like, I have to work really, really hard and suffer in order to get what I want. That could be a story. Is that still true? Or there could be a narrative of, um, I have to get really close to what I want and then I'm going to lose out at the last minute. And that's oh, it always how it goes. Is that a story that could use updating? There's something about how you manifest what you want um, and how you align with what's yours that could use a bit of an update around the story. Because the more committed you are to a story, the more it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Which is also rabbit energy, it's shadow side of rabbit energy. I'm hearing, maybe give some thought to that from where you are now. I feel like there's a there's an update <laughs> that can benefit you. Now, in your place of advice, you have the hermit, which is really stunning. This is Virgo energy. This is a really about going off on a new journey, of being willing to be in your own energy. And, and this isn't about the answers, seeking answers as much as it is figuring out which questions to ask. I feel like you're moving into a place where this is this is a very different you. It's a wiser you. It's it's a older you. It's 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 a you that has molted some skin and some story and and you're being asked to reflect on what is your truth now? Who are you now? Feels like a lot has gone on Scorpio. I feel like you've experienced the death key in some way in some significant way in terms of who you are, your belief system, your given circumstances, there is a transformation that has happened and you're being asked to really take a look at that. The fact that this is your advice, I really feel like you're being called to, to take some time to actively consider this for yourself through a period of reflection and alone time, right? Really getting clear on what those questions are. It's interesting. It's almost like you're leveling up. And so you're being asked to, to empty out your, your tool bag of what came before, your travel pack of what came before, and then considering what tools you could use with where you're going. It's like you're entering into a different climate. So what you had in the old climate is not going to help you out so much. You've got to let it go and consider what, what would serve you now moving forward. That's what it feels like. In your place of victory, like I mentioned, you have the Knight of Cups here again. Same as the Lizard energy, right? What's really interesting is how this is depicted is we have the Hermit, your place of advice, and then your victory is like you're, you're well in the forest. So you're heading out into the forest to your advice, and your victory shows that, oh, you have found your given cup in the forest. I feel like that searching in those questions really has to do with what makes your heart incredibly happy? What stirs your soul? What aligns you in a way where you feel like you're exactly where you're meant to be, where the work that you're doing, you would do it for free, and the people that you spend your time with, it never feels like enough? That's Those are the questions. Those are the questions. Who do you spend time with where you feel like you don't need alone time from? Okay. The outcome here, six of cups, <laughs> really, really beautiful. More water. You guys obviously are a water sign. You know, this again speaks to, to a certain, you know, sweetness and love of the moment about who do you spend your time with where the time really flies, 
where you don't need alone time from. What do you do with the time flies? And you would do it even if you weren't paid for it. Six of Cups. This is about returning to, I feel like this is an inner child healing aspect of you. Or it's like you're really connected and you're you're really choosing to, well, whether you're choosing or it's just happening for you by some means, there's a, a like a sincere healing that's going on. And I do feel like it's related to that dragonfly energy, that truth of like, where, what is my truth now? Can I reframe something from the past so that, you know, stories that I've held on to about certain lessons, can I reframe that for myself and, and experience something radically different as a result of doing so? But this speaks to, I really feel like your outcome here is saying like, there's a certain jadedness or a certain, um, you know, nine of wands weariness that you're able to discard and let float down the river and return to that true untapped joy aspect of why you're here and who, who you choose to be here with. Stunning. So your oracle here, I love this. This is the Seasons of the Witch Litho Oracle, uh, the new one that's out. I'll be recommending this in my newsletter and talking about it a bit more. Um, this is just so beautiful and almost on the nose. Uh, light worker number 23, 2 plus 3 is 5, number of change, Wheel of Fortune there. Uh, the transmutation of shadow is needed when seeking the light that guides you. Fascinating. The transmutation of shadow is needed when seeking the light that guides you. This is exactly what we're talking about, around really allowing yourself to look and consider what stories you have that, you know, aren't going to help you get to where you're going. That's exactly what this is about. Remember, we talked about that death key, that home Scorpio energy as well. There's something, sometimes we can really take our beliefs or our stories or past pain and wear it like a very heavy coat. Um, and sometimes it's very hard to even realize we're wearing it and then even harder to be willing to take it off, even for a while, because we don't know who we are without it. It's stories that we tell ourselves. It's, it's, it's beliefs that we garner from our past pain. This is, this is really difficult stuff. The fact that this is a butterfly, we've got the caterpillar here in that place of challenge. Who would you be, <laughs> right? Like if, if you were to transmute some of those things, if you were to shift the way you think about things. And, and this isn't a surface level activity where it's like, I'm gonna go on TikTok and make a video about, you know, how I see things differently and how the world is a beautiful place and we can manifest from a place of ease. But then when things get tough, you revert right back into your, you know, your your MO, your modus operandi, your 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 home you know, operating system. This is about doing the real work and change of the death key, about entering into that hermit space and going into the deep and dark forest in order to find your particular cup that really allows for that, that magic to work within you where it's true alchemy. Your alchemy is not about manifesting what you want at this point, Scorpio. Your alchemy is manifesting who you really are, right? Outside of your human experiences, I believe that we are divine souls having human experiences. Your human experience is overriding some of your divine expression at the moment. Are you aware of it? To what degree that is? It's going to be different for everyone, right? Watching this. But can you look at that and can you reproportion it? Can you balance that out so that your divine self is taking more room up in your vehicle or your train, as it were, right? Then your past, your ego, your shadow, right? That expression of yourself. It, it's not just about the balance. It's, it's really about as well, like, like what you choose to focus on, which wolf you feed, that, that Native American story, right? There's something about that for you. And it's really being called to the front of your consciousness. I'm also hearing to look out for signs. There's going to be a lot of signs around this. Uh, signs, synchronicities, repeating numbers. Really keep an eye out for these things because I feel like it's all communicating with you and it's kind of like a quiet beckoning, right? You as a Scorpio, your sun sign, speaking of sun, right? Your sun sign is not who you inherently are. Your sun sign is who you are here to grow into. So if you are a Scorpio sun sign, you're here to learn how to be the best Scorpio you can be, which means you're here to learn how to embrace death and change and transformation, right? That shit may terrify you or, 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 or affect you on an obsessive level, right? It's who you're here to grow into. It's your moon sign. That is your true self. That is you without any sort of work or healing or change or circumstance. That is your raw, 
operating system self is your moon sign. So if you're a sun Scorpio watching this, these are lessons that you're learning how to be the best Scorpio that you can be. So the fact that light worker is coming up for you in this way, it, there's really something to that about balancing that aspect for yourself of light and dark perspective and reality, choice and story and narrative, right? I do feel like for those of you, if there's anyone watching this that is a Scorpio moon as well, but I do feel like this might hit a little bit differently and it could be a little bit of a reverse message for you about, you know, choosing to sit in the dark parts of you that, that maybe you find a little bit, you know, um, a, a little bit uncomfortable in terms of really going there and expressing that full darkness so that you can expunge it and circle back around to the light, right? But either way, Scorpio, <laughs> it's it's really, really beautiful. This feels so incredibly positive. I'm also hearing as a last message, take your time getting to where you're going. You're, you're well on your way. You're well on your way. You're well on the road. It's really about what fills your cup, what fills your night of cups here, and what doesn't. Being really honest with yourself about that. Because I feel like if you surround yourself you set the intention and set boundaries and, and make it your priority. Surround yourself with people, places, and things that fill that cup for you. Your experience and your quality of life is going to be drastically different than if you have people or situations around you or even a work, um, you know, your job that, that takes away from that cup but doesn't offer any opportunity to replenish it. So that's something that's coming up for you as well. So... Also, you also know that it's your responsibility to fill your own cup. So there is a certain, you know, aspect of that coming in here as well to, to balance that out with, you know, the people, places and things you surround yourself with. But ultimately, it's really beautiful, Scorpio. It feels like you're exactly on your path here. And it feels like all you just need is, is just this was just a little bit of an extra like little tap on the horse's booty, like a little loving pat to, to just get it like keep going down the road. It feels really beautiful. So with that being said, I so hope that this helps and resonates. Scorpio, please let me know in the comments. How are you doing? Does this help? Does this resonate? How are you feeling about this? Does anyone else have a bearded dragon? I don't know. Let me know what's going on in the comments. Also, I'm so happy to report, I'm going to make a, a this is me video about this uh, here in a little bit, but I'm back in the UK. I'm back on my home base. I am here officially on my visa. I've got my, my crow baby back and I'm, I'm back where I belong. So thank you guys so much for your patience around my process and my travels. I've been back with you for a little bit now, but um, this, some of you have been finding out slowly that I've been back. So those of you who are joining me for the first time after a long time or for the first time, or if you've been with me all along, thank you so much for being here, for watching, for liking this video, for commenting, for sharing, for all of that beautiful energy and just for, for everything, for, for being here with me during this journey. And most of all, and as always, <laughs> my beautiful Scorpios, thank you for being you and be well until next time.